Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Holly Randall Unfiltered special Christmas episode. I love the holidays, and so I'm very excited to have a very special guest here. But before I introduce them, I want to give a shout out to my sponsors. Um, I have to, of course, give thanks to Factor Meals for making eating nutrition food so easy. I actually, like, no joke, ate my Factor Meal before I came here, was in a rush, did not have time to make something, and it was really delicious. And I also drank the smoothie in the car on the way over here, so I feel I feel revitalized and ready to sit down and have a lovely conversation with my guests here. And then, of course, I um, want to give a shout out to Blue Chew as well. They are definitely my main sponsor. And you know, they are a way for you to really make sure that you have a magical Christmas. If you're experiencing confidence issues in the bedroom, Blue Chew is here for you. They have the same ingredients as Viagra and Cialis, but in a chewable form and at a fraction of the cost. Um, try your mo- first month for free by using code Holly at bluechew.com. All you pay is $5 in shipping. Um, that reminds me that I should also tell you, of course, I have a special code for you for Factor Meals. Duh. Um, that's code HRU50 at factormeals.com um, to get 50% off. Okay. So my guest today um, recently secured several nominations for XBiz and ABN, um, including Best New Performer. And uh, very excited to say that she scored two ABN nominations for her role in my featurette Hopeless. Welcome, Lumi Ray. Yay. <laughs> How are you? Oh, I'm great. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. You do, you look lovely today. Oh, thank you. <laughs> uh, so, Lumi, let's, you know, start from the beginning. How did you get into the adult industry? Because you were a cook, right? Yeah. <laughs> I was a cook for, I think, five, maybe six years. I always forget that I lost a year to COVID, but... Yeah, I mean, I just remember I kept getting burnt out and I didn't want that anymore. I still love to cook, but the whole working like an eight hour shift and being on my feet and for very little pay was Mm -hmm. just like not, the passion wasn't enough for me anymore. So I kind of started OnlyFans just to see you know, for fun, and I made more in the first like ten hours of having one than I did in my eight-hour shift of working in a like fine dining restaurant in Napa. So mm-hmm. it was kind of like, and I always was very comfortable, like being naked in front of the camera. Um, that's all I was doing for a minute. I wasn't having sex yet until I went and shot my first scene. <laughs> mm. So I want to talk a little bit about your job as a cook because that's mm-hmm. like interesting and unusual. You don't like meet a lot of female <laughs> cooks, especially like hot female cooks. Yeah. Maybe, they, I don't know, maybe they're out there and I just, they have not revealed themselves to me. Mm-hmm. But um, so how did you like get into that? Did you love cooking from an early age? Like, do you remember as a kid making stuff? I actually didn't. I My mom's very like, OCD and picky in a great way. I love her so much. But she only made, like, certain things, and her palate was very, I don't know. She raised us not very explorative with food, Mm -hmm. and she also didn't really need help in the kitchen. She was a single mom and was kind of like, I'm doing everything. Mm -hmm. Um, I actually didn't start cooking until I was 17, I was working at this restaurant and I was just hosting, doing front of the housework. And another female cook was kind of like, oh, you, I guess just my energy kind of made her think that I would do well uh, in the kitchen. So I started training and two years later, I was like the head cook at that restaurant. Oh, wow. And then just, Yeah, I just kind of fell in love with it. Fell in love with the organization and Mm -hmm. mise en place. And, Mm -hmm. (laughs) like, I don't know, that I always compare, like, a busy day in a restaurant feels a lot like a, like, lawn set day. Mm. And that feeling, even if you're in the weeds and 
things aren't going right or you're behind schedule, you're by the end of it, you're like, we did that. Mm -hmm. We got through that and you can go home feeling like a little more fulfilled. Yeah. So that's why I always loved about it. Yeah. So as the head cook, did you get to decide on new menu items? Did you like oversee other people? I used like, would you like, what would you do specifically? Were mm -hmm. there like certain things you're like, okay, I do the main and other people do the sides or like, how does it yeah, work? Yeah. Yeah. I would do stuff like that or, um, like open the restaurant, set up everything, train new people. Um, I worked, yeah, at this creperie and the owner, most of the time she would come up with the, uh, menu. Mm -hmm. So I never got that experience. It's very rare that I worked in restaurants and mm -hmm. that was the thing. So that's why I always tell people like the difference between being a chef and a cook was I cooked what people told me to cook. Okay. And when you're a chef, you usually get more of a, you get to come up with recipes. Okay. And so it was very rare I got to do that. <laughs> okay. So that's interesting. I didn't know that there was a distinction there mm -hmm. and that totally makes sense. Yeah. And people always are like, you were a chef. I'm like, yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> like, but I'm sure to people out there who really like have worked hard to be a chef I'm, I'm sure it's probably a big slap in the face sometimes so I don't always consider myself to be a chef um mostly just at home mm -hmm. it's the only time I'm like oh I mean I kind of come up with something mm -hmm. or do my own version of a recipe right <laughs> right what is like your favorite thing about cooking it's honestly like I love just I feel like it's a meditation for me, just chopping everything, mm. like sharpening knives, chopping, um, setting everything up, having like my whole mise en place mm -hmm. organized, and then watching what I create with that. It's mm -hmm. like, yeah, it's fun. It's so my husband does all the cooking at home, and I don't mind cooking. I, mm -hmm. I like to cook, and I cook sometimes, but I have like this weird thing about cooking where I feel like I would get into it more, but this is going to sound really strange. But the strange thing about like cooking that I find unsatisfactory for me is that you make something and then it's gone. <laughs> right. <laughs> Which of course, like is the point you're making food for people to consume and like have an experience. But I don't know, like for me, I'm just like, I work so hard to make this beautiful thing. And then you just like cut it up and like shove it in your mouth and mm -hmm. just like, and I think that that also relates to why I love photography so much. Right. Because I love the permanence of it. Mm -hmm. I'm freezing this moment in time mm -hmm. that can never be replicated and I'm saving it and I'm preserving it. Right. And like food is like the opposite <laughs> of that. So I think like there's just some weird like internal struggle that I have with it. But then there's also something really satisfying about making something that people mm -hmm. really enjoy. Well, there's a actually I just watched a movie the other day called Autumn in New York with like I think it's Richard Greer and Winona Ryder, but he's a chef in it. And she asked him like what he loves about being a chef or something. And what he said was, it's the only art form that is nourishing. Like it, mm -hmm. that you actually like, I mean, I'm sure you could say that about anything, but that's like the one thing you but he bring means out, that in, like, a literal, like literal sense of <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah. so could start seeing it as that, but. I, but I understand that where you're like, okay. And then there's also the mess. Yeah. And <laughs> yeah. That you're like, huh, it was so pretty for like five seconds. And yeah. then it's all. Because <laughs> people like bring stuff out and I'm like, this is so gorgeous. Like I don't want to mm -hmm. eat it because it's right. really pretty. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what is the biggest mistake that people make in the kitchen? Cockiness, I think. I think when people, especially because I worked in a kitchen where I was young for many of the years and I would deal with people who I would have to train and they were older than me or maybe more experienced but then they would fuck up because they think like oh well, I don't need to she doesn't know what you're talking yeah. about yeah. or like men yeah. yeah so that I always dealt with but it's always like okay cool like if, if you know what you're doing yeah because um, even I learned that like um and asking for help. Like you need to ask for help. There's no room to have an ego in the kitchen. Yeah. No matter how talented or like uh, far you get in that world, I think you always have to remind yourself there's, and the thing is about cooking, it's like there's so many 
different types of food to learn how to cook. Mm -hmm. So you may be really good at cooking French food, but you might not know anything about like mm -hmm. Asian food. So yeah, it's always good to remind yourself like, oh, like, I don't know, that there's room for growth always. Yeah. So. Yeah. I mean, there's so many variables, right, with different kinds of food and yeah. consistencies and mm -hmm. textures and mm -hmm. the way it cooks. So what is like a, what do you see is the most common mistake that like the average person makes in their home making like a, a regular meal, whether it be, you know, some of the things that I, I, I can think of that myself, I have trouble with sometimes is like cooking chicken breast mm -hmm. or like making omelets. Um, even there's apparently even like a, a right way to boil an egg, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> baking, like what is, if there's like one piece of, one like mistake that you see people stumble on a lot. Could you point out like one particular thing? Probably just attention to detail. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Cause even I've fucked stuff up where I'm like, oh my God, I left that in the oven for too long or. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. Cause a lot, everything I learned how to cook, I learned from chefs and in kitchens. So I feel very honored for that. It's very rare. I think I've ever watched a YouTube tutorial and been like, okay, I'm gonna go do that. I'm like, I'm all I know how, I'm I know what I learned, <laughs> right? They're great, but I'm like, whatever, I'll read a recipe. And just from like my past learning, I'm like, okay, well, I know how like to do this just from. Cause they won't tell like, you like certain things. Cause like, isn't the cookware that you have like, isn't that really important? Because if it doesn't mm -hmm. like cook evenly, it doesn't. Or like there's certain things that you should cook, like certain meats in, or you should keep everything kind of separate. But that's also like my my cook brain being like, okay, this is the cutting boards for poultry. This is cutting boards for veggies. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is yeah. like cast irons are great. Um, global chef's knives are great. Like there's just, but it's also like, that's my world. Like, I think you can make do with whatever you have right. and still make good food. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because there's people out in the jungles that make great food with yeah. mm, very little. <laughs> right, right, right. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so have you, so you started in OnlyFans mm -hmm. and you said you've made like more in the first 10 hours. Yeah. How did you get, because there's like no discoverability on OnlyFans, right? Like, yeah. how did you get people to find you? Did you already have a social media? I, like, didn't have a big social media following. It was just, um, well, I post, I before I knew also that you weren't allowed to post links or anything on uh, Instagram, I just posted it on my story and was like, got to pay the bills. Uh -huh. <laughs> just try to be funny. A lot of people subscribed. And then I also kind of just read that, um, read it in Twitter. And then that's actually how... I got discovered through uh, to do mainstream mm -hmm. was, was through Twitter. Was through Twitter. Okay, so who approached you to do your first scene? Um, freaking, uh, God, what are they called? I should know this. <laughs> um, exploited college girls? Um, yeah. Yes, yes, exploited college girls. Yeah. Yes, that, is, yeah. that is the correct term. Is, <laughs> yeah, because that, yeah, my first scene, I also, I shot, and I, like, was having a good time, but I shot with uh, Tyler Nixon, who's very, who's, yeah, he's lovely. lovely. No, yeah, so I was like, good, I was having a that's fun such time. such a good first experience. Tyler's great. Yeah, he just, he looks like, I don't know, an Abercrombie model, so yeah. I was like, this is, is this, like, yeah. every day. like, a really... I could see you guys getting along because he's also like a very grounded yeah person. like he loves to travel like yeah. he definitely and he's also like still really close to like his family and mm -hmm. his friends like from high school like yeah he's, like one of those people that never really got sucked up in the industry yeah like, like he, he keeps he, it seems like he knows yeah. the difference between his life totally. like he really sees that just as just a job yeah. yeah but um yeah we shot that scene though i think for like three hours i was having sex for like three hours so the sex part of itself was three hours yeah i was wow. like because the beginning of it is just like it's like maybe like 10 minutes of questions and then yeah was it just the two of you yeah <laughs> did it, and like were there like breaks in those three hours so i 
I thought that's what mainstream porn was going to be like. Just three hours of straight sex. Wow. And then, like, started shooting more. I was like, oh, 30 minutes? And then there's, like, certain companies I've shot for now where they're like, we're fire with 15, 20. I'm like, yeah. oh, okay. <laughs> oh. So, wait, does it, did the director just be like, Okay, was, I just, think like, it was just, him. yeah. Because I feel like on our, like, after an hour and a half, I would have been like, okay, we can. Yeah, we can I'm like, we like, took maybe, like, wrap this up. one or two water breaks, but it then they kept recording. Like, it was just. Did they edit the scene to be three I, I hours? I have no idea. <laughs> I'm like, I don't think I've watched it. Because wow. I was also like, I don't know. I don't really like watching my sex scenes always, but. Um, at least those ones because yeah. I'm like a lot of times I don't like the makeup they, they mm-hmm. <laughs> provide but yeah. like I'll watch like the one that we did like me right. and Casey did and stuff because that one was when they beautiful get nominated for, for best girl girl best girl girl <laughs> mm-hmm. yes yeah that was a good one and mm-hmm. you guys like it was it felt really intimate and you guys like mm-hmm. really connected and yeah yeah it was just nice too because we could just kind of like let you go and yeah that's how it felt yeah Yeah, it was nice yeah lovely day so um okay so you did your first uh porn scene for exploited college girls and after that did you like get an agent like what was your next move yeah and then decided to move to LA and signed with not the best (laughs) agent Mm -hmm. and then I think I lasted like six months with them and was just like just didn't vibe with them Mm -hmm. and then recently everything came out about yeah that person so i was like we're talking about molly models by the way yeah (laughs) okay i was like because well i try i know i don't like to like necessarily call people out and stuff but this is very public yeah that's true yeah that's true like hush hush yeah and also yeah i'm like i don't care for that human so yeah um it's actually funny how i got him to let me out of my contract. Was I, it, so you got out of your contract before that happened? Yeah. It was oh, okay. way, it was like probably almost like a year before all that happened. Okay. Um, I like tweeted because <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty vulgar on Twitter. Mm-hmm. Like I, I'm like, I, I'm always more funny. I make poop jokes. I make jokes about whatever. I'm mm-hmm. not really trying to be a girl next door and pretend like I'm not human so I made one I tweeted something about like Indian food mm-hmm. <laughs> and and he told me to delete the tweet it's not good for branding and I was like mm, no mm-hmm. I was like I didn't hire you for branding mm-hmm. and then he was like calls me and let me out of my contract literally because of that because of that tweet <laughs> wow because I didn't want to delete a tweet where I was joking about yeah yeah it was probably <laughs> more than that. It was probably like, especially when you it was. Used, we already had yeah, was such a push and pull thing. Like and he probably felt like you weren't someone that he could control. Oh hell no! Yeah, because yeah. <laughs> I told him I was like I'm at the time I was 24 when I got in the industry. I'm 26 now, and I was just like I'm a grown woman. Like I'm, just, I'm not here to. You're not gonna like. Prom give me empty promises or try to manipulate me in doing anything I don't want to do. Because mm-hmm. I'm like, at the end of the day, if I really don't like this, I'll go back to cooking or I'll yeah. do comedy or I'll do something else. Like, I'm not, my whole life isn't riding on, like, being, like, yeah. A porn star. Yeah. yeah. Which is, having, like. Having that sense of freedom and knowing that you have other alternatives, I think, is, like, really important. Yeah. But it's also, I'm also grateful, like, that I have that I know like not every girl yeah has that and also probably doesn't feel like they're even capable of having that Mm -hmm. so it's just my own environment I feel like you're definitely somebody who has doesn't have a problem setting boundaries is that is that have you always been that way or is that something that you kind of I think the older I got yeah and like through relationships and also through yeah honestly like having a make my own way through a male dominated industry like cooking I yeah. I had to <laughs> I had to have a voice and mm-hmm. <laughs> I was always just this tiny redhead trying to like mm-hmm. and I also grew up with brothers so that's mm-hmm. always gonna make someone be 
but I was the oldest, so I just it wasn't like they bullied me. I right. was probably the one who bullied them. So. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I've always it's definitely been through age and like learning through relationships and how to set boundaries and also have respect for myself and through therapy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> therapy does help for sure. Yeah. But yeah, setting boundaries is is tough. I think that's probably like the biggest thing that most people struggle with mm-hmm. is we try to navigate like our social circles. And I think that a lot of people coming into the adult industry, especially if they're young, mm-hmm. struggle with that. And that's where you yeah. get into trouble. And they trouble. think they have to do things that they definitely don't have to do to yeah. get further in their career. Yeah. And yeah, I wish there was like a sort of like seminar <laughs> we could put on for like 18 year olds yeah. that are ever considering like doing this work yeah i mean there is information out there i think it's also like a problem of where do people find that you know yeah no for sure how do you feel about because you were what 24 when you got in yeah how do you feel about 18 year olds getting in because i know a lot of people say they think that's too young yeah i like i even was like yeah, I feel like 18 is too young. I think it's cool to like do the camming thing and whatever um, thing that's kind of like a gateway to this. Mm-hmm. They should definitely build an audience doing that first, probably. Like I didn't do that, but mm-hmm. <laughs> I. But again, I had a whole life before this, and I also. So I developed a work ethic. I developed boundaries. I'm like a grown woman getting into the industry and. I think like maybe 21, Mm -hmm. like I could see like if I did this at 21, I would have still like had to learn a lot of stuff, but yeah, 18, I can't picture myself like doing this at 18. Yeah. I feel like it would be, cause again, like I wouldn't know like what's okay, what Mm -hmm. do I have to do, what, like what companies are like the right, like uh, have my best interests and, um, your agent's yeah. not always going to And that, you, you know, like I didn't know that, that even way. at 24. And then I quickly, from just like conversations with him over text, I was like, this guy's like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, I don't know what's happening, but I don't feel good about it. Right. But I was able to stick up for myself because I was mm-hmm. like, no, I'm not going to do that. No, I'm not going to shoot for them. No, I'm not. I hold myself to higher standards sorry like yeah yeah. it's 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 hard it's like because like the age argument is it comes up a lot and it's Mm -hmm. tough because it's also I don't you know there's several arguments I could say like for it that I've heard um one of them is of course like well if the government decides you're 18 and you can like go to war and die for your country then like you can do porn um and then I do know some people who have gotten into the industry at 18 and were just like kind of more mature 18 year olds yeah. that did well for themselves mm-hmm. or like it got them out of a very bad situation at home and yeah. it got them like financially independent in a mm-hmm. way that they weren't able to do otherwise. Yeah. But then there's been a ton of people that, you know, have said that they wished that they were, they yeah. had waited. I remember Alina Lopez yeah. said something to me that I thought was, that I always think about and she said that you know, before she came into porn, she had a regular quote unquote job, right? Right. So she, like you just said, like learned work ethic, like mm-hmm. being the importance of being on time, mm-hmm. um, you know, boundaries and that kind of thing. And she was saying, you know, a lot of sometimes girls come into this industry and this is literally their first job. Yeah. That, you know I what think, I mean? I, and then I it's think like, I'll take back the 18 year old thing. I think this should just not be someone's first job. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because the other thing too, when you're, I was 18 working at in a kitchen, not making a lot of money, but making good money at, for being 18 mm-hmm. and deciding not to do the college route Yeah. versus my friends who did the college thing, but they also like struggled because they're like, I can't even get a job. I don't have time. And, but, they have student debt. and then they have all this debt, but, um, but I can't imagine being 18 and being handed a thousand dollars like to go have Mm -hmm. sex and Mm -hmm. then of course when you're 18 you're like oh shoes oh lingerie like i'm gonna go buy all this other stuff you're not thinking like oh 
like IRA account or yeah. like you're not thinking Taxes. about that. Taxes, you're not thinking about how, yeah. So I feel like if you're gonna get into the industry at 18, for sure, like service industry or like so, you have to at least have a job where you have to hold yourself accountable Yeah, <laughs> because that's a big thing for this industry. Yeah, because the thing is like with most, you know, jobs you have a boss yeah. who will fire you if yeah. you don't show up to work on yeah. time or like you fuck around or whatever. Yeah. Whereas you're in, really like in the adult industry, you're an independent contractor, mm -hmm. right? For like several different brands that aren't connected to each other. Yeah. So, you know, you can be you can like there's more room to fuck around mm -hmm. um but also to like really put yourself in a disadvantage because if you become somebody who has the reputation of like mm -hmm. always being late like not yeah. being professional people may not necessarily tell you that but they just mm -hmm. won't hire you yeah again. and then you're like oh and all then of a sudden like, you're like, not and, working like, you don't really know because you've never had that nine to five where yeah you had to clock in at a certain time mm -hmm. and you got written up if you did something mm -hmm. wrong you know yeah so it's kind of it's tricky mm -hmm. all right guys um we're gonna take a quick commercial break and then we'll be right back uh mm -hmm. we'll talk about more uh lumi's career and then um of course i'm gonna give her my little mm -hmm. my little gag gift um, okay it's <laughs> christmas y'all all right see you in a minute <laughs> hey guys i want to talk to you about something very important nutrition. Now, if you're like me and your life is a juggling act of family, work, personal care, your husband, everything else that life throws at you, you know that it's really, really hard to eat well when you're always on the run. This is why I love Factor Meals so much. I've been using Factor Meals for months now, well before they came to me to sponsor my podcast. So I can definitely say that they are a product that I love and that I use all the time. What I love about Factor Meals is that they deliver chef-crafted, personally nutritious meals right to your door. No prep needed whatsoever on your part. And they have all these different kinds of selections to choose from depending on whatever your dietary needs are. I choose the calorie smart meals so I know that I'm getting something nutritious, but that's also not too full of fat or high in calories. The great thing about Factor Meals is they have something for everybody and their food is seriously tasty. I take it with me wherever I go and I can always be sure that I'm going to get the right amount of food that I need to keep myself going and believe me, I need to keep myself going because work has been crazy lately. I have like 10 projects that I'm juggling right now and Factor Meals has been an absolute lifesaver. It stopped me from snacking on unhealthy foods or God forbid, going through the drive throughs for some like really unhealthy burger that's just gonna make me feel terrible afterwards. With Factor Meals, I have something that I can just pop into the microwave and heat up in two minutes and I know that I will have something that is not only going to fill me up, but is not gonna weigh me down and make me feel tired later. So here's the deal. If you're ready to take the stress out of mealtimes and enjoy truly delicious food, head over to factormeals.com slash HRU50 and get 50% off when you use code HRU50. That's factormeals.com slash HRU50 and use code HRU50 to get your factor meals at 50% off. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. Okay, so Lumi, um, you said that porn helped you heal your relationship with sex and intimacy. Mm -hmm. um, what did your relationship with sex look like before you were in porn? I feel like for me, I was always raised with this mindset that it was kind of like a power tool. Mm. <laughs> um, but I was always just naturally horny and <laughs> kind of didn't like I was always raised by people that were like you have to wait to have sex or you have mm -hmm. to have like no one's gonna respect you if you mm -hmm. fuck on the first date and I was kind of just like like the first person I had sex with was a friend and I was just like oh I don't care if we don't date like mm -hmm. um but there was like a period in my life where I feel like I had to get fucked up to have sex I couldn't make eye contact with certain partners I just 
I just was doing it to, I don't know, have that. It was almost like a, not a sex addiction kind of thing, but that feeling of like, I need, I just need that, but didn't really, but then I would feel like shit after, whether it was like someone I was dating or not. I was just like, why am I doing this? So I started going to therapy for it. And then through this work, having it be sober (laughs) on set, and I've developed like really, like some of the like best friendships I've ever had with people who I'm intimate on camera with. And it's just this special thing to be in that moment with someone where you're like, wow, we're both fucking nuts to be doing this job, but I see you, you see me, like we're here together. So that's like, so now I feel like I can make eye contact with guys. I It's, it's given me a different standard too with like dating, especially mm-hmm. people outside of the industry. Mm-hmm. So. Do you find it like a little bit of a relief that you can have sex with these people that you work with for work, enjoy it, but not have like those strings attached? Where like, yeah. okay, now are we dating? Yeah, Do I have to call you. Am I gonna no. hurt your feelings? You know what <laughs> no. I mean? Like, there must be something that's a little bit just more like at ease. Like we can it literally is. just be friends and have sex and like. We can just be friends. Literally. And there doesn't even, have to be more to that. There's even some that I've had sex off camera with or like there's even some where if I've had like a weird shoot or like a weird day where they're like, just come over and like I'll give you aftercare or just like, mm-hmm. I just feel like I have, and I didn't grow up with, uh, I want any of the people in comedy and be like, well, make sense you're porn, but my dad wasn't really around growing up. Mm-hmm. So I feel like, through this too, it's like, oh, I'm developing these like really trusting, special bonds with these men Mm -hmm. that I get to, yeah, have sex with and not feel like they're taking something from me. It's Mm -hmm. like, we're sharing this moment. We're giving both of ourselves to each other and we're creating something. Like it's, I don't know, it's different than just like meeting someone at a bar and going home with them. Yeah. Yeah, there's definitely like a different context to it. And I think that a lot of people do imagine that, you know, all women in porn are victims and all men are predators, which is absolutely not true. I mean, obviously, there are definitely cases where that happens. And we've seen those, you know, all over the news and all over Twitter. Mm -hmm. But there's so much more that that aren't like that. Yeah. And um, there is... Yeah, this kind of like camaraderie and friendship. And I think that generally like adult stars really kind of care about each other because it is an interesting line of work, right? Where you are physically intimate with somebody Mm -hmm. for work. Yeah. And you're also stigmatized for it Mm -hmm. generally by the world. So there's also like an us against them quality to it. Yeah. That I think creates more of a bond. It does. Which is kind of interesting. Yeah. But it definitely doesn't, it's interesting though, because it definitely doesn't, I've never felt like, okay, so this is like the only pool of people I can date mm-hmm. because these are the only people that like, I understand. So far, I've had pretty good luck with dating outside of the industry. So I feel very grateful that I have kind of like the best of both worlds. Like I, I was going to ask you about that because yeah. dating <laughs> generally outside of the industry is really, is, is hard and you don't seem to be having issues with it no I mean I've I'm like I have my own issues with just like uh so far I haven't dated anyone who's been like I don't want you to shoot with guys or like they're uncomfortable about it um I was with this one dude for a second and he was super nice he literally told me he's like I don't want you to change anything like Mm -hmm. (laughs) about your life now that we're like hanging out and stuff um and that just that ended just from honestly i just didn't feel like we were a good match but um but so far anybody i've dated um i try not to at least jump into anything like anybody i start seeing it's kind of like pretty casual for a while and then yeah i just haven't got had to really get to the point where we're gonna have that conversation mm-hmm. thankfully <laughs> but so far um i did like couple people and they've all been very they're just like let's just talk about it or 
or they're kind of into it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I've had yeah. like I've had like two guys be like, I watch your I'll watch your stuff sometimes. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, like today this guy I'm seeing was like sent me something. I was like, oh god, you found my Twitter. <laughs> it's like, oh no. And he was like, yeah. He's like, I, I was just wondering if he ever tweeted about the time you tried to kill me with sixteen habaneros. I was like. No. <laughs> but that's what happens when you date a cook. I it, sneak sixteen habaneros into your so food. The, the thing, off. I wasn't I wasn't pissed off. I was trying to impress him because he's part Peruvian and I was like, Oh, I'm gonna make this Peruvian dish and I like spice. And I was like, You're Peruvian, you must like spice <laughs> and we start eating it and I was like, Huh. He's like, it's really good. And I'm like, yeah. And then we're both like sweating after like two minutes. We're like, he's like, how many habaneros did you put in it? I was like, I like six. He's like, probably put like one and we would have been fine. It's like, okay, well. So I almost killed him that night <laughs> on accident. Habaneros are intense. I love them. but they're Yeah. I, now I know. So how do you meet guys? Because you're kind of known for sliding into like famous people's DMs, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so you're not necessarily on Tinder. No, not Tinder. Um, I have a Raya. Okay. That's usually, that's like the safest one, I feel like. Um, so far, those that's usually where I meet people or Instagram. I've, mm -hmm. I've yeah, I usually just, I've slid in and just usually say Woodbane. Just, that's it. And usually it, will you bang i just that's all i say is would bane what like i i would bane you it's oh, like what bang. i'm saying oh, sorry, yeah gotcha, gotcha. that's all i say <laughs> i mean shortened to the point yeah so i'm like especially if it's like yeah someone i'm kind of just like it's a famous person mm -hmm. i don't really see that being a relationship but and they respond yeah <laughs> <laughs> well, also, too, like, people get a lot. I mean, I know for me, I get so many fucking DMs mm -hmm. that, like, a lot of times, like, I won't see people's DMs. Yeah. I, I also think, don't check my DMs anymore. Yeah. Well, I have the, the blue part. check mark, so I feel like that helps. That but also. Help. That puts you in the primary section. Yeah. yeah. But also, <laughs> always, like, I always set that, like, I feel like just saying, like, oh, I'd smash or I'd bang. Mm -hmm kind of gets their attention more, especially if it's like a celebrity you kind of have a crush on because they're not like, I'm sure they get messages all the time about girls I like, I'm, yeah, I'm in well, your like, city. Like kind of trying to step, <laughs> yeah. step around yeah. the and ultimate. I, which I'm like, if, if it's a dude that's like pretty up there, like an A-list, like there's not much he's probably wanting to do. Yeah. I mean, sometimes they're like, so, Where'd you grow up? Yeah. <laughs> and then you're like, I mean, <laughs> you're like, I just, I just messaged you that, but okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, so you're not shy about your love for hooking up with comedians. No. What attracts you to comics specifically? Um, I mean, I, if there's one job I think more vulnerable than being naked on camera, it's telling jokes to a crowd oh girl like stand-up <laughs> comedy gives me fucking so much anxiety yeah like i that is the one thing that i don't think i would ever have the guts to do like i will yeah. do all things mm -hmm. before stand-up comedy i will jump out of an airplane yeah. <laughs> i will jump into a pool full of roaches mm -hmm. i will have sex on camera which i won't do now right <laughs> um i will do anything before i do stand-up comedy because that is so scary and i mm -hmm. almost hate going to to like open mic nights because when that person gets up there that's yeah. not that funny and mm -hmm. nobody's laughing at their jokes like the Your pain heart breaks. that I feel inside for uh -huh. that person is like it's very overwhelming and uncomfortable yeah yeah <laughs> I get that and you have I feel like you also have to be kind of vulnerable that's to be why. good right yeah, for sure and that's why like any of my favorite comics um I'm like now friends with which is interesting but they're all very authentic people mm -hmm. and they're also like the kind of comics that don't like because there's comics that like kind of do the douchier thing where they're 
making fun of everyone else. Mm -hmm. But I like, like even me, like I've ran some stand up and it's always like stuff based off me and my own shit. Yeah. Because I feel like if you can't laugh at yourself, then you're not a good comic. <laughs> yeah. And I think that people find humor in the things that are always personally relatable. Yeah, right? exactly. Because we all have vulnerabilities. Exactly. So when, so when someone can stand up there and not only talk about their vulnerabilities, but, mm -hmm. you know, make you laugh about them. Yeah. Then that I think that triggers something in all of us. Yeah. Because you're also like, oh, I feel included. Yes. Like, yes. Oh, I feel seen. Yes. And I'm not the only like, person who feels that way. Yeah. Because I feel like a lot of people, I mean, you go to a comedy show for entertainment, but you're also weirdly going for this like therapeutic kind of thing because mm -hmm. you're like, oh, it's all. And so I like those kind of comics that kind of go up and they're like, all right, like, <laughs> let's talk about trauma or like, mm -hmm. let's, but in like a very lighthearted, <laughs> mm -hmm. fun way or just like the world's issues and what's going on, but somehow like having a very clever punchline mm -hmm. to make it feel a little less heavy yeah. for what's going on. Yeah, yeah, because there's a lot going on. Yeah. And there's a lot for people <laughs> to cope with right now. Exactly, so I'm like, I feel like that's mostly why people go, at least right now, yeah. probably more than anything. Who are some of your favorite comedians? And they don't have to be people you slept with. And just because you <laughs> say their name doesn't necessarily mean that you slept with them. I just want to put that out there. Unless you want to say you slept with them, then that's fine. Yeah. Yeah. OK. <laughs> <laughs> um, my favorites are Brent Morin, Andrew Santino, Bobby Lee. I only slept with Brent. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who that is. He's he's lovely. He's um, He's like one of my best friends, too. So it's like. What's but his name? He, Brent what? Brent Morin. He's like his uh he's like probably one of the only comics where I've rewatched his Netflix special like over okay. and over again. He's very he's very good writer, very smart. Um yeah, his comedy is almost like theater though. Mm -hmm. It's I don't know, it's very interesting. Um I'm trying to think who else. Uh love Larry David. I don't know if he does stand up, but just as a comedian and a writer, he yeah. he's like he well, he's like yeah. He's I yeah. mean he's he's um Seinfeld. Yeah. But yeah. You know, better. <laughs> but George. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, great. Yeah, the list goes on. I'm like I I can name so many, but we'll be here for another like. <laughs> now you said that um over the summer, you were considering doing stand-up comedy yourself. Mm -hmm. Are you still considering that? Yeah. Have you done it yet? Not yet. I've written some stuff out and was talking to my friend Bobby about uh, coming on stage mm -hmm. at one of his things, I think, at Brea Improv. So we'll see. Are you nervous? At this point, I'm just kind of like, I don't know, I'm kind of going to the new year with like, you just gotta do it. Yeah. So for I'm, I'm gonna do stand up. I'm gonna get my diving certification. I'm gonna do like things that scare me just because my, I mean, my, <laughs> how I even decided to start doing porn was I had the thought of like, well, I'll try anything once. Mm -hmm. Like you just gotta yeah. do it. Like why? So, yeah. and now it's led me to a great career and great life. So. Yeah. Let's see what comedy leads to. Let's see what maybe swimming with sharks leads to. Hopefully, yeah. I'll. And I'm sure I'm sure anal is on that list too, right? For the new yeah. Year. Well, I've I've shot. Like, actually, anal. I don't know. Maybe you've shot anal. I've know. shot I've shot anal. I haven't I haven't done a DP yet, okay. and I want to. But everyone's like, hold out for a showcase. And I'm like, <laughs> oh fine. yeah, yeah. Which well, I'm like, I get it, but you know what? There's. I wouldn't say that there is. Um, that's bad advice. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, because once you've done it, it's once also you've done money. It, you can't like, yeah, do it again. And yeah, why not like make it the whole? Yeah, thing? yeah. why don't you know make the whole thing at theater? Yeah, exactly. Oh, that'd be so fun. Yeah, I do. Oh, <laughs> well, you want to do a live DP <laughs> on a be, theater stage? That'd be do really stand, fun. Do a special where you do stand up comedy and then you get DP. and then I do, do. That'd be amazing. I'm sure no one's done that yet. Nobody has done that yet. I will love to do that. Yeah, I'm so down. I don't know who would, what company would be. <laughs> I guess I could do it. You could do it. Yeah. I'm like, we got ABNs for 
your featurette. So I'm like, it definitely gave me inspiration of like, also that I want to try to direct something next mm -hmm. year. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, let's talk about um, our feature at Hopeless. Yeah. I just realized, <laughs> oh, I almost <laughs> forgot to bring it up. Jeff's gonna fucking kill me. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us a little bit about um, the feature that we did, Hopeless, um, what the story's about, how you felt shooting it, mm -hmm. um, how you felt about the nominations that you got. I was very excited about the nomination because I definitely wanted to give you and Jeff like a great performance as acting and like my favorite thing to do is like somebody comes to me with the script is like I really want you to do this mm -hmm. and I just have I feel like you'll help me like bring this to life and so for Jeff to feel that way about me and Casey and I was just very honored and I mean it's a it's an easy to relate to love story of like the unrequited love and also falling in love with your best friend and kind of harboring that love and I feel like me and Casey did a good job at kind of projecting that tenderness of friendship as it escalates into like you know when we, if we like like throw the ice cream down <laughs> run <laughs> off in the beach um like I feel like every it was like a very well-written script and so I'm like just grateful to get to be a part of that and so it was very easy for me honestly to bring those emotions to the screen and working with someone like Casey like who yeah she's, she's also a great writer director actress yeah. like I'm like she does it all so I was like okay like I guess I got yeah <laughs> bring my a game <laughs> and then of course like the sex scene was beautiful and me and her, I I knew too, like already, it was crazy too, because that was the first time we shot together. Mm -hmm. Like we talked about doing it before, of course, and it's always fun to build that tension with like co-stars. So it was really cool to, I kind of love doing first sex scenes with someone for features, mm -hmm. because sometimes it's like, I feel like, especially in that movie, I mean, the script is two best friends finally, mm -hmm. you know, falling in love and having sex so I feel like that nervousness energy of like oh my god I'm fucking this person for the first time on camera kind of goes hand in hand with like because I did that too for her for a lust feature it was the first time I had sex with Alexis Tay and it was very much that where you're like I don't know this person, I don't know their body, I don't know what they're gonna like, I'm gonna do my best I know what I like, especially being a woman like just kind of knowing like oh, thank god we always have the consent talks but yeah yeah it was i felt like it was a i don't know everything felt organic everything felt good i felt very proud at the end of it uh and then now we have all these nominations so yeah. I'm like which is like even just getting the nominations is like great to be recognized for and i wasn't even gonna go to avn and then seth gamble was like you have to go to <laughs> He's like, I know that that movie's gonna get nominated. And the, I said, I was like, if I get Best Actress, I'll go. And then like, the, that was the first thing I saw when, um, was it Casey, Casey sent, sent, sent it? Link, yeah. I was like, oh shit. <laughs> I was like, okay, I guess I gotta go to <laughs> <sighs> Yeah. But yeah. What, were you surprised <laughs> to see that? Kind of, I, I would've, I just felt like she like killed it more. Mm -hmm. I don't know, but um, I mean, I definitely did my best. So again, like just the nomination, I was like, oh wow. Like, mm -hmm. and for it to be like a featurette we all worked on that I'm like, you guys, you guys go buy it on our only fans. Like yeah. it's not something that, I don't know. It feels almost like more rewarding. Yeah, because it was very much a grassroots yeah. project. It yeah. wasn't for a studio. No. No one gave us money. To no. <laughs> and that's why I'm like, we all did like gave our time and gave yeah. our efforts. That's really. Yeah, you had to really feel like it was something worth your time. Mm -hmm. And that and it did. Even if, if I didn't get that, I was still very happy and yeah. proud of the whole project. So, yeah. Yeah, I'm like, no. Yeah. I think it came out great. Mm -hmm. So 
guys, if you haven't seen Hopeless, you can find it on my site, hollyrandall.com, mm-hmm. and also on on Lumi's OnlyFans. So if you haven't watched it, go check it out because yes. it is it is a lovely piece of sexual cinema. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, so let's um let's talk about squirting. <laughs> Hot topic. <laughs> A lot of people do not Speaking believe that it is a thing. It is a uh, fake, and it is just girls peeing everywhere. Um, what is your opinion on that? I think there's a little pee, but <laughs> <laughs> I mean, um, but no. I mean, I think I feel like I have, people would have to ask my male talents that have worked with me. Um, <laughs> the feeling that they feel when they're inside me and when it comes out they're like it's not coming out where you pee they're like it's like yeah and you can just feel like the tension like in the Mm buildup, and it's almost like an ejaculation Mm -hmm. um they also always it doesn't taste like pee I've -hmm. tasted it so like I always chefs always have to taste their (laughs) (laughs) taste their meals (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> that leads me to like ask how you feel okay, <laughs> how you feel about cum oh I always swallow but like will oh. you be afterwards you be like mm, too much coffee mm-hmm. like do you honestly <laughs> I've had more experiences tasting I feel like men in the industry actually take care of themselves better mm-hmm. <laughs> like I feel like they want to do a better job and they like like every male talent I work with at least goes to the gym every day yeah drinks eats water well. eats well because yeah. like, it's I mean no matter I mean, I'm sure there's ones out there but, but I mean here's the thing like I know that people tend to sometimes laugh when I say this but this is true like Porn stars are athletes. They're oh, sexual athletes. That's like, what I mean. You have to treat your body like, yeah, like that. You had sex with Tyler for three fucking hours. You that's think that, why. Like, Tyler could do that if he sat on his ass and ate Cheetos all day. No. And like, you know, like guys. The boy surfs. They, like he does. Yeah, yeah. They have to be able to be in good shape mm-hmm. to have just the ability to do the scene, right? Like it's a very physical thing. And yeah. then they have to also be able to get their dick hard. Yeah. Which is like a whole like next level of physical exertion. Every time I do a strap on scene. <laughs> you have more respect for the guys. I'm always yeah. like, cause a lot of times I'll just do it for OnlyFans, but I've done some for like adult time too mm-hmm. here and there. And every time I'm just like, oh my God, <laughs> 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 holding. Like yeah. having a whole, t- and I'm like, I'm also, it's not like I'm actually getting pleasure out of it. Nope. So I'm really just like, wow, you guys like do this. And you also, cause the thing is I'm doing it and there's no way I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like the fact that these guys have to do that. And if it feels good yeah, or if it feels not that good, like they have to like gracefully shift or like not come. Like, yeah. You have to. Yeah, if it feels not that They're good, the you most... still have to stay hard. Yeah, and then you and have to stay hard. And if it feels too good, you have to not come. Yeah, so I'm always like, the most underrated job, I think, is male performers. Oh, my God, I totally agree. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it's a lot for females, like, in what we put our bodies through. But, again, I'm like, I treat my body like an athlete. Like, I get massages. I do infrared sauna. I get IV drips. I try to take care of myself as well as I can because it's a lot. (laughs) Um, But I feel like I've I've had, which again, it's not always women's fault, but definitely I'm like, I take so many probiotics, apple cider vinegar, like to have a healthy gut and healthy area. Mm Mm-hmm. But I feel like I've had more experiences where I taste the girl and I'm like, like, mm-hmm. I'm just get a spit on it and just hope, like, just do this. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, but a lot, of, I don't think I've ever had a bad experience where I'd be like, mm, yeah, you too much Red Bull. <laughs> like, <laughs> so far. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's, yeah. it's, it's harder. I think for women, it's harder to take care of their vaginas because mm-hmm. there's, especially when you're having sex with people with different pH balances and there's that, a lot of things yeah, that go, so that's why can go like, wrong I and don't... not every woman knows how to take care of their body yeah and it's different for everybody yeah because I know you know I'll ask veterans like what their 
what their method is and it'll be different Oh yeah, girl to girl, and yeah. be like, "This is what works for me." Mm-hmm. I tried the thing that this other person does; did not work for me. So you yeah. have to figure out what works for your body, and it could take a while. Yeah, and no, some people sure. are more sensitive than others. And that, like, I am not prone to UTIs, but I know girls mm-hmm. who are. Yeah, and a lot of times those girls are would rather shoot anal, and I'm always like, "That's crazy," but then I'm like, "Oh wait, no, UTIs." Are yeah. awful, like. But also, like anal is easier for some girls than so, vaginal yeah, sex, that's... depending on the makeup of like your. your yeah, partner. yeah, that's true. Yeah, I it's not for me, but <laughs> <laughs> I like it. But it's like it's yeah. I think I like it because it feels more animalistic. Mm. That's the only time I like it. But that's why I like it every once in a while. Mm-hmm. Versus, I could not. I don't think I could be a anal performer. Mm-hmm where it's like your thing and you yeah. do it a lot. Yeah. Like I would be very shocked if I ever get an award for an anal scene. <laughs> mm. Well, I mean, so you we'll see. Know. <laughs> never know. Yeah. yeah. So uh, do you feel like you have a porn persona or do you think that you're pretty authentic- authentically like yourself? In I'm me. Like I'm, I do my OnlyFans. I do all my social media and like <laughs> why I haven't hired someone is I'm like, I'm so much me that I don't know if I can even train someone how to respond like I do Um, or post stuff like I do. So I have yet to, it would have to be like, probably like a friend, honestly. Mm -hmm. At first I thought that would be bad, but now I'm like, I don't know who else knows me in my voice. And I'm very much me. Yeah, I, I remember gay in the industry and like I mean I see so many people who make probably so much more money doing that for sure but I just was like eh I don't (laughs) I don't have the energy it's already a lot to like do the acting part and I love acting but I want that to be a job I don't want to be like every day of my life with um my social media presence yeah so yeah, I mean, who else is going to make poop jokes about Indian food? Exactly. I'm like, Dave Rock didn't like it, but... <laughs> but there there were some people out there who did. Yeah, I'm like, I'm still here. I'm still kicking it. I think at the end of the day, people always appreciate authenticity. Yeah. I'm like, I, I don't know. I'm like, it's honestly, I'm just lazy. <laughs> I'm like, I just don't have the energy. Like, yeah. like, because I know so many girls who... They knew what their porn name was going to be. They knew, like, they even, like, would maybe lie about their age or lie about their backstory. I'm like, I don't really want to be anyone else. Yeah. I'm pretty. I've been me for so long that. Yeah, but, I mean, there's probably people who look to get into the industry because they want to be somebody else. And that's why, too. And I get that. And I also know a lot of times that's probably, like, a defense mechanism or something there's like something there you know there's something that they that's like they feel like okay I can become this character now and that person is like Mm -hmm. tucked away and I don't have to deal with all that trauma Mm -hmm. and this so yeah it's a deal with the trauma eventually yeah it didn't come up and bite you in the ass yeah but different strokes for different folks this is true So um, since we are reaching the end of our episode and it is Christmas, I have (laughs) this gift for you. I'm so glad you didn't tell me what What it was. was. I know I was. Now I'm like, what the hell could it be? So so my husband got this and he brought it home. He's like, you got to give this to someone on your podcast. He's like, (laughs) you got to. He's like, it's so good. I'm like. Okay. Okay. So here you. Okay. I'm okay. not going to say anything else. I'm just going okay. to give it to you. Oh, God. Okay. Holy sh. <laughs> so dumb. Oh, my. That's so much. It is so dumb. Can you I didn't even know. Can you the camera? I didn't even know they made a two pound. This is a si- This is more than I weighed coming out. The, you can just throw the wrapping on the floor. Oh, okay. Right <laughs> it this is, is a, like a child. So for those of you who are not watching the video, it's a two pound giant peppermint stick. Holy sh- Nikes. Like, I don't know. It's just so dumb. It's like, oh my who God. the fuck eats that thing? Like, I love that he 
What else was at the grocery store was like, this is Bristol Farms (laughs) of all places too. (laughs) Bristol Farms. And he said, he's like this. Yeah. And he's he's like, like, you know, who's going to love this? Porn stars. Porn stars. <laughs> a two pound giant <laughs> peppermint stick. Because oh it's like, my God. Okay. So if one was to actually want to eat that, like, how, how do I get my mouth? Would that tip? Should you, should, do you want to try? Do you want to see? Like, if I don't you, think I might dislocate my jaw trying to do this, but I'll try. Let's see. Let's see. Oh, it's not as, okay. Why does it look bigger in the box? Yeah. I mean, it's still big, but. Yeah, I'm like, I can't even, I can't even get my mouth around it. You'd have to like lick this for it's for a very 40 long years. Time. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's like, it's like the dread of candy canes. This is literally probably the size. It's like, but I mean, honestly, like how Bristol Farms, how does one <laughs> eat that thing? Do you just lick it for, I mean, how long would it take you to eat that? And then. And then you're not going to eat it in one, right? So you you no. lick it, and then what do you put it? Being a cook, like, I'm honestly probably going to melt this down and some oh, turn it into something else, and okay. make it like a recipe for something else, like okay. cookies or something. Because I'm like, there's stuff in here that you can take. See, but see, I clearly gifted this to the right person. You actually found <laughs> a way something, to eat a way, this. A, a use for that besides sticking it up one of your orbs. Yeah, I'm like, if I was going to do that, it has to, this is staying on. Yeah. I might try that before and then make cookies with it afterwards and mm. gift it to some perverts. Oh, my God. What a great idea. Yeah. Yeah. It's a very Casey Calvert thing. Yes. <laughs> yes. I love I, – this is one of the things I love about Casey is that you talk to her. She's such an intelligent woman. She's such like a – I, I don't I, I don't want to say like she's normal because that suggests that everybody <laughs> else is not normal. Right. We're all crazy in some way. But she's, you know, intelligent. She's reasonable. She's rational. Mm-hmm. She's, you know, like all of these things. So intelligent, so talented. And then she like sticks eggs up her butt. Yeah. <laughs> and then like pushes them out. And I yeah. like, we'll see these videos on my Twitter. I'm like. I can't that reconcile was a f- that with the Casey that I know, but yeah. I, mean, I guess I can. No, the first time, <laughs> first time I ever heard about her was through Gustavo Turner, and he was like, um, he was just giving me all the great names mm-hmm. to work for. He was like, he would love to work for Casey. She's she works for Lust and stuff, and I was like, cool, I'll look her up. And the pin tweet was her, like. Yeah. Her I mean, butt was she's cranked an, open. She's an anal queen. She's the anal queen. She's an anal queen. I don't think anyone else really gets that title. No. I see people here and there say that they are. I'm like, I, I, do you bake cookies with your butt? I don't think so. <laughs> Until anyone else does, I'm giving the anal queen to Casey. <gasps> oh my God, you guys should do a cooking show together where you like, she like cracks eggs in her butt and then you make <laughs> something out of it. I'll call her after this. I mean, is that her. the best idea or not? Yeah. Like, I'm and we sorry, could, but that's I, the best idea. Yeah, I'm like, uh, I think we can do it on OnlyFans, but I think all the other sites we can. Because I'm like, I'm, because I know Only she fans, does that. OnlyFans is weird about um, food, actually. Yeah, they say you can't put it inside you. Yeah, maybe like, um, Casey will know. Casey, Casey will yeah, know. I'm like, I'll, like loyal fans, you can do it. I would just do it just so. <laughs> Just to do it, honestly. <laughs> okay. Well, I that is that is my idea of the year. <laughs> Thank God we're coming to an end of Yay. the year because uh, I won't have any other great ideas like that. <laughs> uh, so I do have some questions for you from my Patreon members, which we'll do a separate little clip for Ooh. for them exclusively. Um, mm-hmm. So if you're a Patreon member, you will be able to watch that. If not. You should join. Um, in the meantime, Lumi, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you. It was such a pleasure. And can you tell everybody where they can find you online? You can find me at uh, Instagram at Lumi underscore Ray, at Twitter or X um, at Lumi Ray with two Ys, and OnlyFans just at Lumi Ray. Fantastic. <laughs> and you guys can find me at Holly Randall on X slash Twitter mm-hmm. <laughs> and Instagram. Uh, my TikTok is still there, shockingly. Ooh. Holly Randall unfiltered. Is it, Mosh, is it Holly Randall unfiltered or Holly Randall 78? Holly Randall 78. Oh, Holly Randall 78 is my TikTok. 
and then also, of course, if you want to support this podcast, access the bonus Q&As that we're going to do right now, watch these live streams, um, join my Patreon, patreon.com slash Unfiltered. And of course, I would be remiss not to mention our movie Hopeless mm -hmm. um, that got six AVN nominations and three Expos nominations. Mm -hmm. Go to hollyrandall.com to purchase the movie there. Thank you guys so much. Happy fucking holidays. Yay. We are taking next week off for Christmas, but I will be back the first week of January with more episodes for you and so much more coming in 2024. Thank you guys so much. Have a great one. Bye.